Let's learn about complex numbers. Hey, you guys, want to meet my new friend? Sure, but where is he? He's right here. Why can't anyone see you? Beats me. Today, we're going to learn what this means. So on our agenda, we'll start with an opener. We'll look at imaginary numbers and complex numbers. We'll learn about something called a complex conjugate, and we'll go through some operations with complex numbers and our exponents with complex numbers. Let's get ready. You need to grab your notes and pencil. The teacher says, why are you turning in a blank sheet of paper? The student says, because all of my answers are imaginary numbers. Here's our opener. So we want to think about graphing this parabola. And we know that this is a parabola that is shifted up to if we use our transformations. Also, A is positive, so we know that it's going to open up. So we have a parabola that looks like that. If I asked you how many x-intercepts there are, you probably are going to say there's none. How many solutions? probably going to say, then there's none. However, what you really mean is that there are no real solutions. And what we're going to learn today is there is actually two imaginary solutions. And we're going to learn how to find those. If we think about solving this algebraically to see what happens, we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. So I have x squared equals negative 2. I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and I'm going to remember my plus or minus. So I end up with x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 2. And here is where we sort of run into trouble with that negative underneath. So we're going to learn about how we can extend that. With our imaginary numbers, we are going to identify them as a lowercase cursive i that looks like that. And i equals the square root of negative 1. This is going to help us when we're simplifying. In example 1, if I have the square root of negative 9, I can break that up so that it's the square root of negative 1 times 9. The square root of negative 1 is i, and the square root of 9 is 3, and we usually put the number in front of the i. Make sure you're not putting a plus or minus there. This is not an equal sign. You are not drawing in the square root sign. It's already there. So we're just simplifying. So it is just simply the positive 3i. In example 2, we have the square root of negative 8. When we simplify the square root of 8, we have a perfect 4 in that. So that simplifies to 2 root 2. But now we have the negative. So this becomes 2i root 2 in simplified form. In example 3, we have 3 plus the square root of negative 20. So the square root of 20 has a square root of 4 and 5, so this becomes 2 root 5. So when we simplify it with an imaginary number, it becomes 3 plus 2i root 5. If we keep in mind that i is the square root of negative 1, let's think about squaring that. So i squared is the square root of negative 1 squared, and a square undoes the square root, so we actually end up with negative 1. And this is the only time you're going to square a number and end up with a negative. So complex numbers. You can think of these as a hybrid. You have a real part, which is identified here as a. And then you have the imaginary part, which is bi. And we want to think about that when we go through our operations, that there is a real part and an imaginary part. One of the things you might be asked to do is to equate two complex numbers. So the directions sound a little bit scary. And if I look at this problem, I have an x and a y and an i. But if we just think about it and we think about our real parts first, so anything without an i, so 3x is real and 9 is x. And there's an equal sign. So in order for this to actually be a true statement and to be set equal, then my real must equal my real. And I can say 3x equals 9. Therefore, x is 3. And I can say that my imaginary, oops, I don't want the highlighter, my imaginary equals my imaginary part. Take that sign with it. And we have negative 5i equals negative 25yi. Divide by y, negative 5 equals negative 25y. And then be careful, make sure you're dividing the correct way. We're dividing by negative 25, so y equals 1 fifth. This is a complex conjugate. And this is called the conjugate pair. So what do you notice? Well, I can see that the imaginary part is positive here, but negative here. And that's going to be important. So what you do is you change the sign of the imaginary part, and then you will have a conjugate pair. 
So in example five, what is the complex conjugate of 2i minus 23? Be careful, it's not quite in the order I gave you. So here's my imaginary part and I wanna change that sign. So the conjugate pair, the other piece would be negative 2i minus 23. Let's look at some operations with complex numbers. We'll look at add, subtract, multiply, divide, and our exponents. With adding and subtracting, just keep in mind that we are combining like parts. And with this, this means real with real and imaginary with imaginary. So I have the negative one added to five, so I get four. And I have 4i minus 12i, so negative 8i. And we have just added those two complex numbers to get a new one. Be careful with subtraction. Make sure you're distributing that all the way through. So 12 minus 12 is 0. You can write 0, but you don't have to. 3i minus negative 6i is 9i. So technically, this is written in complex form, and this would be an imaginary. I will accept either. When we're multiplying, we, rem we need to remember not to leave an i squared. So usually as I go through and I multiply i times i would be i squared, I circle it so I don't lose it, and you're not finished if you still have an i squared. So you wanna make sure you're substituting in the negative one, and that will allow you to go further with your math. So when I distribute here, two i times three is six i, two i times negative 16, or eight i is negative 16 i squared. I would circle that i squared so I remember to go further. And then 6i minus 16, I'm going to substitute in the negative 1. And 6i plus 16 is my final answer. We're going to do big distributive here. So we get 35 minus 21i and then plus 10i and negative 6i squared. I need to combine those and I need to substitute in there. So we get 35 minus 11i minus six times negative one, so that becomes a positive six. So we have 41 minus 11i. And let's see what happens in example 10. I have five times five for 25, five times negative two i for negative 10i. And then we have a positive 10i, and then we have negative four i squared. So, when I combine my like terms in the middle, we can see that those are going to add to zero. I have 25 minus four, substitute in the negative one, and I have 25 plus four. So this one simplifies all the way to 29, which is a real number. So if you remember what we just did, five plus two i and five minus two i is a conjugate pair. When we multiply them together, we're going to get a real number. Let's look at division. And just for a minute, just look at exit 11, example 11 and example 12. And we're concerned with the denominator. See how these are just a little bit different? So we are gonna have a different process to work our way through. So I don't wanna have an imaginary in the denominator. Same way I don't wanna leave a radical in the denominator and I would rationalize it. Remember rationalizing a denominator, you multiply by whatever that square root is. So here we're going to use the complex conjugate to multiply the top and the bottom by that. And remember that we're allowed to do this because this is essentially just one, so I'm not changing the problem at all. I distribute to the top and I get six i minus 12 i squared. Here we just saw what happens when we multiply a complex a conjugate pair. So I'm gonna get the nine, my middle two will cancel, and then I have minus 36 i squared. So we've got a couple i squareds. So six i plus 12 over nine plus 36 becomes six i plus 12 over 45. We can simplify everything has a three there. So I'm gonna take out a three. And my final answer is two i plus four over 15. Let's see what happens in example 12. So I have positive five i, so I wanna multiply by a negative five i and distribute, so I get negative 20i minus 5i squared over negative 25i squared. So this becomes negative 20i plus 5 over, this would be a negative 1, so this becomes over 25. We can factor out a 5 
and I have negative 4i plus 1 over 5 times 5. So my final answer is negative 4i plus 1 all over 5. Let's look at our exponents with imaginary numbers. I want you just to pause for a minute and I want you to do i to the 1, i to the 2, i to the 3, i to the 4, i to the 5, and see if you notice a pattern. This is what you should have seen. It follows a pattern of 4. So i to the 1 is i. i squared we already talked about is negative 1. i to the 3 comes from i to the 1 times i to the 2 because we're really adding our exponents. So if I multiply those, i times negative 1, I'm going to get negative i. And then i to the 4 comes from i squared squared, which is negative 1 squared, which is actually a positive 1. And then everything just repeats because i to the 5 is i to the 4 times i to the 1 which is 1 times i, which is 1. And it will keep following that pattern. And we can use that pattern to answer higher exponent problems. So I kind of just compare everything to 4 then. So if a number is divisible by 4, then it's going to equal 1. If it's not divisible by 4, but it is divisible by 2, then it's going to equal negative 1. Then if it's not divisible by 4 or not divisible by 2, I still go back to comparing it to 4. Is it 1 bigger than 4? Like 5, like 9. If it is, then it's going to equal i. Or is it 1 less than? 1 less than, 1 less than, so then it's going to equal negative i. So let's try a couple. So i to the 24 is divisible by 4, so it's going to equal the same thing as i to the 4, and i to the 4 is 1, so this is going to equal 1. i to the 82 is not divisible by 4, it is divisible by 2, so it's going to be the same thing as i squared, so it's going to equal negative 1. i to the 100 would be divisible by 4, but this is 1 bigger, so this is going to be the same as i to the 5, which is the same as i, and i is i. <laughs> and let's try one more. Negative 3 times i to the 12. Well, i to the 12 is divisible by 4. i to the 4 is 1, so this is just going to equal negative 3. And just to recap, i itself is equal to the square root of negative 1. i squared is, thought that, i squared is negative 1. And we don't want to leave i squared in any problems, so we want to make sure that we are substituting that in. The complex conjugate is a plus bi and a minus bi. When you add or subtract, you combine like terms. Multiply, just don't leave an, an i squared. Division, you use the conjugate, and then you have your powers which follow a pattern of 4. Good job.